The ability to regrow joint cartilage remains one of the big unsolved problems in orthopedics. Each year, thousands of knee and hip replacements are done because of that shortcoming in our treatment regimen. Around 20 or 25 years ago, Dr. Richard Stedman developed a technique called microfracture where small holes were punched in the end of the bone where the damaged cartilage was. That area would then bleed, it would fill in with a blood clot, and over the course of several months, that blood clot turns into a tissue called fiber cartilage. Now, fiber cartilage isn't normal cartilage. It's rougher and it doesn't bear a compressive load well. Also, the results tend to go downhill after about two to three years. Fiber cartilage also doesn't do well when it's rubbing against other fiber cartilage, like an area here and also down on the tibia. So if you have damage on the femur on the top and the tibia on the bottom, those two areas are generally incompatible and the microfracture technique doesn't work well for that. Dr. Saul's technique is revolutionary in that he's able to treat bipolar lesions, again, two areas rubbing on each other, and especially bipolar lesions that are non-contained. Now, when I say non-contained, I mean that you don't have to have surrounding walls of normal cartilage in order for the cartilage to grow. Instead, the holes are drilled down into the bone and cells build from the bottom up. The holes are close enough that as each of these holes fills up and spills over the top and forms, it forms, if you will, a small mushroom. And those mushrooms then coalesce and that layer of cartilage builds up from there to form a solid sheet. That can be done over a very large area, even the whole femoral condyle. So the real question at this point is, is there a limit to how big an area that can be treated? Could you conceivably treat a patient's entire knee? For example, a patient with tricompartmental arthritis throughout the whole knee that would universally now be agreed upon by orthopedic surgeons as just requiring a knee replacement. Maybe that patient's a candidate. That's what I hope to find out in the future. My hope is that in the future, knee and hip replacements and shoulder and elbow replacements will be viewed as barbaric and something that we couldn't believe that doctors used to do to put in a metal and plastic knee. Why didn't they just grow cartilage that was missing? It sounds really simple, and I think one day it will be looked back on as being very simple, but you have to start somewhere. I do a lot of knee and hip replacements, and I definitely don't ever want one. So I'm trying to find a better way to do things, and I think a lot of people are going to end up benefiting from these advances in medicine. We're going to see that in this decade especially, this is the first time that will have the widespread clinical application of cellular therapies to alter the way that we treat diseases in medicine.